last summer. And the second exhibition I'd like to mention, and kind of offset against that, is another exhibition curated by a very prominent artist, Luke Tymans, called Luke Tymans, colon, Vision of Central Europe. Uh, uh, <laughs> both of them were kind of self-portraits. They were artworks rather than exhibitions, mm -hmm. if you like. But at the same time, they were totally bona fide exhibitions. Anybody who bought the ticket, nobody who bought the ticket complained, you know, that I've seen anything other than an exhibition. <laughs> it was both of those were good experiences for me. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that the exhibitions that you curated and I participated in were anything less than good experience. But they were good experiences. For an artist to say it's a good experience in the first place, totally agree with you. It means things did work, they were arranged rightly, things were delivered on time, you know, mm -hmm. you got your expenses paid and all that sort of thing. <laughs> good experience. Well, if I can and, uh, uh, um, leave my moderating role and <laughs> have a little bit of a complaint, uh, Moshekwa type, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Mr. Timmons has a bigger budget allowed to him than we have ever. <laughs> <laughs> leave that, leave that time outside. As a anyway, what I want to say is this. Uh, in the first exhibition, the John Bock exhibition, I wasn't there for the installation of the work and you know, hardly knew what was going on. But when I arrived some time into the exhibition, I had this incredible shock. Have you seen this exhibition at Kunsthalle Bern? It was this beautiful, extraordinary, like huge sculptural sort of environment made of, it looked from a distance that it was made of things he pulled out from the skip, but it was actually all artworks, you know, and they were kind of heaped on top of other people's artworks, heaped on top of each other and kind of tied together with cable ties and sort of, you know, propped up by sticks. And it was quite extraordinary. At Kunsthalle Bern? No, 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 no. Temporary Kunstdale in Berlin. Quite Berlin. an extraordinary thing, really quite extraordinary. And I arrived there, I couldn't even find my piece in the mess. <laughs> <laughs> but it was brilliant. And you just feel... And you just I feel saw the fun. show and I didn't find your piece. No, no, nobody did. Yeah, maybe it wasn't there. <laughs> Actually, that's perhaps why they didn't send me the catalog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Um, I think I it, 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 John Bock created this extraordinary piece of sculpture out of other people's work, but managed to convince, certainly me, not necessarily in terms of my own work, but from, from what I saw, that it was done with a total commitment, respect and passion. It's a different kind of respect for that mm -hmm. work. Uh, Luke Timans, on the other hand, created a show that I was very proud to be part of, not least, because the rest of the exhibition, when I saw it, opened my eyes to things that I rather arrogantly thought I knew more about that Luke Timans ever could, coming from Czechoslovakia and so on, Vision of Central Europe, uh, and being familiar with places like Poland or, you know, the kind of uh, former Austro-Hungarian Empire. Uh, and it did open my eyes, not least that he kind of enlisted uh, Andy Warhol or Alex Katz as Eastern European artist, himself as an Eastern European artist. <laughs> really. uh, but when you actually saw the work, you, you were convinced. And if you didn't know your history and your geography, you could have been fooled. <laughs> you know? It was really convincing. But the funny thing the is... The two things they had in... Sorry. The, two, the way he did it was in a in a kind of, you know, art historical or curatorial sense, totally hands-off. He, he brought these incongruous artists together, and unlike John Bock, who stitched this amazing sculpture out of it, looked just sort of left it, you know, leave that there, leave that there, give it its space, we won't even try to, you know, tie it together, and let's go for a beer. <laughs> and, uh, and talk. <laughs> totally different shows. But the one thing they had in common, is that there was a great sense of emphasis mm -hmm. where you felt both look explicitly in the title of the show, Luke Timon's vision, and uh, uh, and uh, John perhaps sort of you know explicitly through the form of the exhibition that they are saying look at this, mm -hmm. you know, not just look at this because I think this is interesting. Simply look at this. This insistent. Uh, pointing at other sort of artists' work that they brought together. Look at this, look at... And what I is interesting this is in, the one thing in this... That you don't see curators often doing. No, because we would be trashed for that. 
Um, I'll Excuse answer me? on that. No, we would be trashed mm -hmm. for the. F I was talking about that particular show with Adam, being from Eastern Europe, um, and the whole thing is that which the, show? The Blue is this the, the vision on Central Europe? Um, what we would be trashed for is the total non-exhaustivity in the research. Um, the ho this kind of legitimation that is expected from us. And I'm sometimes, I must admit, and I'm leaving again my moderating role, I'm very jealous of artist curators because they get a license we will never get because we, we are judged with in different terms at this moment. In the, and I think this would be maybe a very interesting thing to open it up because we are already enjoying ourselves uh, for a bit more than an hour. And I think... Uh, we have a lot of people uh, here that I think are impatient to uh, interpolate and we're accountable. <laughs> so then mm -hmm. that we would uh, probably open the discussion into the public. It always starts slowly, but it comes. <laughs> there was a question back there. There was I a question there indeed. <laughs> Not anymore. It was withdrawn. When uh, Ms. Filipovic was talking about this uh, different exhibitions of uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres and all these piles of candy <laughs> with made into a South American map, I just want to know uh, when the they uh, the people allowed to participate by taking some of these candies away uh, during the mm -hmm. run of the exhibition? Yes, yes, of course. And therefore that would destroy the form of this. Argentina uh, disappeared. <laughs> 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 but this, this is built into or embedded in the work. So Felix mm -hmm. gonzalez has designed these artworks which are meant to be taken, eaten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in that way, yeah. this questioning of authority that I said was my premise for starting this comes from watching the works and watching mm -hmm. the fact that not only do they undo their own form by allowing visitors to take them, touch them, change their shape, but undo the idea also ultimately of the artist as the final form giver mm -hmm. and undo also like one of the central premises of the way an institution functions, which is you look disinterestedly, but you don't touch, you mm -hmm. definitely don't take and eat and not there. And <laughs> then what do you do with the wrapper? And so, so yes, so these forms were always being undone. And the thing about uh, something looking like South America is it looked like that one day, but then the next time, I mean, there's no, <laughs> there, you know, it, it looked completely different. Yeah, I mean, that, what really I was so curious about was that, so you, then you'd have to be informed well in advance that this piece was once looking like South America, but through your interaction and through your taking or whatever it is you do. You wouldn't have to be. All, I mean, you would just have to, you would engage it the way you found it. No, but it, of course, I, 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 I just, it just begged me because it seemed like it was so important that whoever this artist was that created this <laughs> candy in the, in the... South America is my interpretation. I mean, I, mean, I looked at it at the oh, moment, okay. at the moment that <laughs> okay. I saw it. I thought, hmm. <laughs> okay, no, I was very curious about that. Thank you. No, he didn't ha start with the intention to... <laughs> okay. Could now. be. I'm sure this is still a far too, let's say, it's not a very conclusive talk, so I, I'm, uh -huh. I think I'm sure there must be... Maybe, maybe I, would, uh, I, I could ask, uh, put it in a different uh, angle, because uh, Peter and I, we... Should I tell? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Peter and I are collectors, and uh, we are sometimes being asked to put uh, on show what we have collected. And recently, I've been asked by the Tyler's Museum to bring in some of my uh, drawings, the drawings we collected, and combine that with drawings from Tyler's. And there I have this, uh, well, I'm, I'm pointing at your last remark about the difference between the uh, institution putting up a show and the artist putting up a show. For a collector, it's even more complicated, I mm -hmm. think, because more or less I trust the curator of the museum that he is do knowing what he's doing because I do it intuitively and I assume that he is the one who has done the research. So I would like to point this out. Is, is this an interesting uh, uh, way of, of putting on a, a show? Or do you see more of that? 
uh, do you think it brings in a different angle? Because we look differently. As a collector, you look differently than the artist, of course. And you also look less professional. You look from the intu you are uh, more intuitive. So that <laughs> makes it Your complete. It's about really <laughs> provoking different modes of engagement with the work, isn't mm -hmm. it? And there isn't really, it would be a sad day when we had one kind of privileged mode, for instance, the kind of educational uh, mode where we are going to the museum to learn and therefore need uh, a sort of different input from the curator, mm -hmm. then we are kind of going to an exhibition to enjoy. There was an extraordinary anecdote told at the table this evening about a curator who wrote uh, somewhere that, that he showed up at the gallery and with a relief realized it was closed. <laughs> No, why the hell did he go there in the first place? <laughs> you know, there are different reasons for, for uh, engaging with the work, and so there have to be different strategies and techniques well, and inputs into curating. Uh, well, on that anecdote, I think it's, an, it's also an interesting uh, idea to, to open up the discussion further. It's, it's, there is a fashion nowadays that says sometimes no art is better than more art. And it, in Buren's text, it was a nightmare that it he could envision the times that it was gonna be possible to make exhibitions without art, to just kind of like having curators, in his mind it was curators to be blamed, um, <laughs> enjoying just their being curators. And the funny thing is that indeed recently I read this text and we were talking about that, that uh, one of our colleagues enjoyed that uh, exhibition places were closed and that uh, there was no art to be viewed but then at no moment he was kind of like uh, questioning his own profession but this is in fact where the curator truly becomes an artist isn't it when the exhibition is the pure form is no content <laughs> no it's true i mean that that is the one sort of you know one moment when when the when the authorial claim of the curator is, is totally legitimate mm -hmm. but how can there be but because it can't be, but it's, you know, but that is, <laughs> there can't of, be, okay. you know, that's the aspect, in, in a way, that's a noble ambition. I quite like that. <laughs> you know, it does not matter. I mean, this is a guy who is partly responsible for the rather amazing retrospective of the empty exhibitions under the title Voids in, in the Pompidou. Yeah, but that's something very different. Very different. No, but, but what is, <laughs> it is really actually the kind of undercurrent of our discussion because it is to do with this draw, perhaps it in is some to do cases, with yes. no, uh, yeah, you know no the art. difference between the yeah. artist and curator and so on. So why should it be any more interesting when the empty gallery is is attributed uh, as a work of an artist than when it would be uh, a work of a curator? You know, uh, well, I don't I think have, there is I a have sort of you need to sometimes. Uh, it is dangerous in the absence of uh, a kind of, of a thing that, that, that urgently needed to be made and nobody else could have made but an artist, in the absence of some such thing, it is dangerous to kind of uh, uh, think in terms of that hierarchy of the artist somehow being prior and the curator somehow being kind of secondary, you know? This only applies in instances where which is something I feel terribly strongly about, I must say, where we produce a work in our studios and you come along and see it and think, you know, but this is jolly nice and I would like to show it to somebody. But, but that's not the only model because there are artists like Francis Alice who collaborates a lot with Cotem of Medina. 